Mommy, could you teach me how to tie a bow? Sure. You want to try it on her shoe? I was wondering back in this morning. It's a big ad for the movie tonight. That looks like Adam. Okay, sweetie, you're all ready. It's over after tonight. Just remember that. No, it's never over, John. That's right. We're very excited about it. Child finding New York is going to refer any calls to us if you involve children in Florida. You know, this is the first time ever that they've aired an 800 number at the end of a movie like this. We have 10 volunteers coming in. That should be enough. Oh, I think so. If not, we'll, we'll get more. Where are you going to watch? Oh, at home, just the family. Well, good morning, John. Good morning. This is one day you had every right to take off. Oh, no, no, no. I just assume continue. I mean, I'm way behind. And, uh, and I want you both to know that after the movie airs tonight, I'm really going to get back to normal. Well, that's great, John. I hope this movie does everything you want it to. Thanks. <laughs> I know we're early, but he drives so darn fast. Uh, how are you? Uh, Reve's putting Megan to sleep. I'll go get her. Hey, wait a second, big brother. I know that look in your eye. Anytime you're about to explode, you get that funny tick. No, I'm okay, Joey. I promise. I'm okay. Look, if you'd rather be alone, I could take Ram home. No, no, no. I want you to stay. I need you to stay. Both of you. This isn't going to be easy, Joy. Graham and Joe are here. Did you get them something to drink? They're helping themselves. Just keep thinking of Megan. I do. Three weeks ago, I received a call. My little cousin Adam had disappeared. His grandmother asked me to pray. And I did. 
Many thousands of people prayed for this little boy who knew him only from a picture and the love of his family. Did all these prayers go unanswered? Why did this terrible tragedy take place? Answers defy human understanding, but I believe that Adam understands and that he himself proved to be the comfort for his family. So long for now, Cooter. <laughs>six minutes on the show. Um, we're gonna ask some questions about background. Don't let them ask us how we felt when we got the news about Adam. That just wastes 30 valuable seconds. We really want to talk about what people can do. Okay, right. You okay, honey? Sweetie? She's exhausted. I want to see the food show we've done it. some progress in Florida since Adam was kidnapped, but it's only the tip of the iceberg. Now Florida has a clearinghouse, which is beginning to keep track of missing children. But until every state in the country keeps track of every missing child and then lists those children in the FBI computer, we will never know how many children are missing in this country. And as far as I know, 13 children have been located as a result of the movie. How, many how does that make you feel? Well, we're, we're very, very gratified. But this old lady loves being in the park so much, she stays too long. When she finally decides to leave, it's already night. Real dark. Uh-oh. Mm, and boom, man jumps out of the bushes. He tries to take her purse. Come on, Sparky. Come on, Bobby. Come on, Buckaroo Megan. Here they come. And what do they do? They make so much noise, the police come really fast. That's right. Bobby and Sparky and Buckaroo Megan save the old lady so she can come to the park another day. Hooray! Getting sleepy, honey? No. <laughs> Daddy, where's Adam? What happened to him? Told you about Adam before, honey. The bad person that killed him. Where was Bobby, Sparky, and Buckaroo Megan? Why didn't they save him? They just didn't get there in time. Why? What were they doing? Saving other people. 
Oh. So where's Adam now? In heaven. What does Adam do up in heaven? He's a star. Star in the sky. And he helps me. He gives me the strength to continue to carry on. Daddy, don't be so sad. You sleepy now? This tour will give you a very good idea of what our place has to offer a company like yours. Right over here. Excuse me, over. Mr. Walsh. Your office said I could find you here. My daughter, Lizzie, she's missing. Just a moment. Uh, could, could you just give me a minute? I'll be right back to answer those questions I know you're going to want to ask. Uh, excuse us. You okay? I'm fine. I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt your business. My daughter, Lizzie, well, she's like your Adam. She's missing. How long has she been missing? Over a week now. Are you working with your local police? Oh, yeah. We we talked to them, and, and they put out those bulletins. I know. I know. And then when you ask them if there's anything new, there's never anything new. But there's the missing children's act. Have you taken this picture on your local television station? I wouldn't know where to begin. Well, you, you begin by going there and asking them. If they say no, you beg them. If they still say no, call me. John. Really need you over there. Look, just don't give up. I mean, get up every day and do something. That's how Ravay and I got through it. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. Thank you very much. Maybe I shouldn't say this, but those are clients over there, and the deal is not closed yet. How's this? Reasonable. Oh, John, next week, I'm going to need those numbers Wednesday for the presentation on Thursday. Six days, no sweat. No. Just paddle nice and easy, nice and steady. Okay. Okay. Here we are. Hi, Mommy. They found someone who confessed. Where is he? He's in prison. What, they put him in prison already? No, he was already in for something else when he confessed. What's his name? Does it matter? Yes, it matters. What's his name? Tool, Otis Tool. Where is he, in this building? Uh, he's already in prison. What's he in for? Arson, murder, burglary, you name it. He's in there for life. I want to see him. No, you don't. The hell I don't. Where is he? Did he see Adam's movie? Is that why he confessed? No, apparently not. That's one of the first things that we asked. See, we suspected that he might be trying to cash in on this publicity. These types love to get their pictures in the newspapers. However, Tool knew too much about the case. Things that you couldn't know unless you were there. Like what? John, do you really want me to tell All you? All I want to know is if he suffered. No. And that's all I'm going to say. I mean it. So what happens to Tool now? They electrocute the son of a bitch. Well, he's just confessed. I mean, first they have to verify the confession. Can I be in on that? Verifying the confession? No. Oh, OK, so they verify the confession. Then what, trial? No, he's pleading guilty. All that's left is for the court to pass sentence. So it's over. If they execute him, it is. Will they? I don't know. I don't know.
Oh, hell, look at that. We could go in the back. This is our house. Here they come to where I'm standing. Are you sure? Yes. I don't think all this isolation is fair to Megan. And, I mean, you're not exactly a typical father anymore. You're gone days at a time, weeks. And soon, she's going to understand what happened to Adam, and she's going to have to live with kids talking about that. I think she needs a brother or sister, a little friend. And maybe they can take care of each other. Maybe if there's two of them together, it'll be harder for someone to get them. Confession made the front page. Bye, hon. I'll try to get rid of them. I'll read this later. Look, this is all going to calm down pretty soon. I'm sure of that. I got to get to work. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye, hon. Senate investigator, Jay Howell. Jay, I'm sorry. I thought you were one of them. I know, I just saw him go. Yeah, it's been pretty crazy around here. Oh, come in. Come in, sit down. You want a cup of coffee? No, no, I'm fine, thanks. What brings you to Florida? Well, I heard about Otis Tool's confession. I thought I'd come down and see how you two are doing. That's tough. It's making me 
making John crazy. I have some good news for both of you. All your hard work up in Washington has paid off. A National Center for Missing Children? We got our funding. I can't believe it. Oh, that's wonderful. That's just what John needs to hear. You know what? Uh, come to think of it, I, I will take a cup of coffee. Thanks. So how about you? How are you doing? reopening a wound. I don't know what's going to happen next. I'll tell you what. Let me check into this a little bit. See what I can find out about Tool. I made a few friends down here when I was DA up in Jacksonville. I'm still a member of the club. Try not to worry about it. Township Woodland and Kitchell for paperwork. That's all you got on this guy? I uh, just got this. What is it? Read it. Public Defender's Office. Tool recanted? You're kidding. Public Dad Defender says he did. Without a confession, how much hard evidence you got on this guy? Bits and pieces. Enough for a good DA to take him to trial? Possibly. No, it's got to be. This thing's been national news for over two years. They just did a movie on it. You have no idea what these people have been through. I know, I know. It was a lock, damn it. I told the Walshes they didn't even have to consider going through a trial. How am I going to tell them different? Okay, let's go to trial. Let's get the sucker up there and get a real conviction. Not one of these I did it numbers. I throw myself on the mercy of the court. No mercy. That's it. He gets the chair. You sound like you actually want to stand outside his cell on death row laughing in his face. Spitting in his face. And pull the switch yourself? Yes, it's not justice if he doesn't die like Adam. Don't you understand that if we go to trial, we will have to hear exactly what happened to Adam? Point by point by point by point, we will have to relive every moment, his last screaming moments. to us to decide if there's going to be a trial. understandably very upset about Toole's recanting of his confession. If whoever killed Adam is still out there, wherever he is, all the children in that community are in grave danger. We may never know who killed our beautiful little boy. And there's nothing we can do about that. But although our hearts will be broken for the rest of our lives, our minds are still working, and there are things that all of us can do to stop the thousands of adults all over this country who prey on children. It takes an incredible coward to hurt a child, to rape a little girl, to kill a six-year-old boy. But Revae and I believe we would be cowards if we didn't do something about it. Mr. Walsh, don't you think we might be scaring our children? 
We teach children how to cross the street safely. We teach them what to do in case of fire. We teach them how to act in all kinds of emergencies. They have a right to know what to do if they feel that an adult might be trying to hurt them. Every police agency in the state, in the entire country, must be mandated by law to take every missing child report. We need to do background checks for teachers, daycare workers, foster parents. In this state, you need a federal and state background check to be a doctor, a lawyer, a police officer, a realtor, a veterinarian. In other words, you must be of good moral standing to sell a house to take care of animals, but not to take care of children. I love you. Give Megan a kiss for me. I'll call you tomorrow from... Uh, you know, I don't know what legislature, in which city, what television show. Because the quality of life for children in some states is better than it is in other states. And law is permanent. Law will affect the quality of these children's lives. The time has come to change the law. We're not asking them to go out and look for every missing child. Where's that coming that's from, New York? But they must Call him there. Uh, I'll talk to him as soon as he gets off the air. He's on tape, Mr. Millett. He should be on his way back to Miami. Let me know as soon as he gets in. Okay. We've made some progress. I tell you, I think the best thing the two of you can do is get away from here, uh, away from Tool, away from the press, away from the memories. The business that pays me. Oh, come on, John, you know I'm... It's a job I happen to be very good at, Jay. And I like it. Well, yeah, see, uh, it happens to be another job that you're very good at. And uh, I think it uh, needs a man like you a lot more than the hotel management business. I think I got my touch back, Mrs. Walsh. I just sent Jay to his gastroenterologist. I didn't need a gastroenterologist before this. Despite that, I still want you to work with us. Count on it. Anytime. Just call. Uh, uh, you're not getting my point, John. Well, what? What are you saying, Jay? We want you up there full time, both of you. You mean move all of us to Washington? You have to be there. You were instrumental in, the, in making the center happen. If it's going to work, it, it's got to have you right up front, visible, involved. What's the criterion for this job, Jay? To have had a murdered child? And have made the whole country aware of the problem. Hell, made the country aware there even is a problem. I just don't understand why it's up to us to do all of this. I mean, isn't it time for other people to pitch in? We've done our share, more than our share. You're right. You're absolutely right, David. On the other hand, as John has said many times, we do need a national clearinghouse. We need state legislation. We need to organize the groups out there in the country. Jay, I'll be there whenever I can. I just don't think I can uproot us right now. Not when... What do you say we tell him? Should you tell me why? We're gonna have another baby. Congratulations. Thank you. That's great. I'm really happy for you. Ice cream? Ice cream. Sent hand lotion for me and Daddy. Sent hand lotion. Come on, honey. Come on down. There we go. Get oh. out of here. You're Mrs. Walsh. I saw that movie about you and your son. My whole family cried. Oh, well, that's good of you to say. Thank you. They never really told you who did it, did they? No, they didn't. They don't really know. The CIA knows. I beg your pardon? But there's a whole file at their headquarters in Langley, Virginia. Strictly confidential. The extraterrestrials got him. Uh, we have to go, Megan. Come on, honey. They're trying to cover it up, but they're taking the children. Come on, honey. The extraterrestrials are stealing the children, Mrs. Walsh. Do we have these uh, figures yet? No, John's getting them. Is John back? Not yet. 
Try to locate him. We have to add something to the figures for that presentation. That's going to take at least 12 hours with computer. We're not going to make it, Ray. You know, the pictures on the cartons would be a great promotion for the dairy itself. And they could help find a lot of kids. Well, for me personally, I agree. I really do. Upstairs, though, uh, look, frankly, John, this is a very conservative outfit. And the board doesn't want to be the first on the block. Well, you can tell them they're not, because the Dairy Association up in Michigan is doing it already. I mean, I think if you called them, they could tell you a whole lot of things. Well, uh, it'd mean even more if you talk to them direct. Would you be, have time to do that? You mean go in the boardroom? Sure, I could be back in, I don't know, maybe maybe a week. They're meeting this afternoon. Well, that's perfect. <laughs> Is Mr. Walsh there? No. Isn't he back from the Sunflower Dairy yet? What do the parents do with the prints once they've taken them? Give them to the police, bring them here, whatever you do with yours. Well, ours are done by professionals to begin with, and the parents keep them along with the picture, dental charts. Well, the sets come with these uh, beepers, too. Not for the parents, for the kids. Beepers? Sure. Child finds himself in trouble? Um... We're not interested in endorsing your product, Mr. Sullivan. Oh, 35 bucks? Not too much to ask for some peace of mind. And the center gets a chair. First of all, fingerprints should be done professionally. And as for your beepers, they'd fall off any active child in about two seconds flat. We're not here to make money off children. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello. Hello. They said yes, Sunflower Dairy. First pictures with the next batch of cartons, six weeks. They want to talk to you. Thank you. Hi, guys. John, I don't know how to tell you this. I'm uh, really sorry. Nah. Uh, <laughs> it was coming, and it's coming a mile off. I mean, no one wanted to say it, that's all. And, you know, I don't even blame you. I mean, uh, I'd want me out if, if I weren't around as much as I'm not around. Something like that. It's not that we want you out, John. We want you in. But like old times. Old times came to an end in a swamp. Damn it, John. This is as much your company as it is ours. Maybe more. You brought me in. I didn't know Ray or anybody. The point is... That our company's behind schedule because of me and the delays are costing our backers God knows how many millions of dollars. And I say, sure, I'll get you those figures. Only all I do is, is tie up the Watts line with calls to California and Michigan. That's it. That is exactly it. Damn it, John, you are the best. You are the absolute best in this business. But you either got to do the job full time or you got to let us find somebody who can. You know, to tell you the truth, I don't give a damn about hotel management anymore. I mean, I, I realize that hotels are still important in the grand scheme of things. God knows I seem to be staying in one every other night these days. So you guys just keep on building them, and, and I'll keep using them for, for a night's sleep. Make this country safe for children, John. That's your occupation, though. Oh, hell. No tie, no jacket. I thought we were going to El Swanko restaurant tonight. Uh, 
I quit the company today. You what? Well, I didn't exactly quit. We came to a mutual understanding. They asked you to leave? Or stay full time, which would mean giving up all my activities in, in behalf of the children. So I gave up the part that pays. Good businessman that I am. Oh, my. You are a full partner. You worked so hard for that. You worked 10 years for that. I know, I know. Well, what are we going to do? We got a baby coming. We'll be okay. How are we going to live? Washington? Well, I know it doesn't pay very much, but my partners are going to buy me out. I mean, that'll keep us going for a while, maybe a year. I guess I better cook tonight, huh? You're still worried. Well, last night, after you went to sleep, I kept thinking about having Megan and a new baby and a new place to live, no family around us. And? And that's just it. There were too many ands. You really want us all to move to Washington, don't you? And you don't. I don't, but I will. I don't want to leave our home, not to mention Graham and Joe. And I love our house. I don't want to sell it. Why don't we just rent it out and go for a year? One year. Somehow I don't think one year is going to satisfy. Flight 182 to Washington, D.C. is ready for boarding. All passengers report to gate 36. Three years. Three years since Adam was taken. Tell you the truth, I've lost track of who I am. You're an advocate, John. The most effective advocate for kids we have in this country. And you certainly know the political process. Oh, is that what this job is all about, Jim? Manhandling every state legislature in order to get some decent laws passed? For starters. Look, John, the president himself is going to dedicate the National Center. Now, we can get started, but without you, it's going to be a lot harder. I'll tell you that right the now. The juvenile justice office is behind you all the way. 100%. You're the man the whole country knows. Everyone. John, you can get to anyone. News people, corporate You have heads, already. Senators. Gentlemen, I know all. That. I've heard it all before. I'll do it for a year. Against that wall, please. Coming through. I got a plane to catch. Sorry, guy. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good Thank timing, you. too. Well, it's not the greatest timing, but I got to get there because everybody's waiting for me. I've got to get to everybody I can get to television, radio. Do you realize movies, that you've magazines. invented a way of talking without breathing? Yeah, well. Uh, it's extraordinary. What are you looking for? Tie. Is there a tie in any of this? A tie. Is there a tie? This box is all locked up. 
Would you put them in any kind of a... What's that? Here's a tie. Not a tea tray. It's my favorite. Oh, oh, this is a lovely tie. Oh, you're so clever. So kind to me. Thank you very much. They'll be oh, sure to love it. I'll get going all, to all love the attention it. I want with this on. Mm -hmm. Three years ago when Adam was missing, although our local police searched diligently in their own small jurisdiction, we soon came to the harsh reality that there was no system. No local, state, or federally funded agencies existed to assist parents and to deal with the problem of America's missing and exploited children. Since that time, we've traveled the country seeking knowledge and trying to create awareness. We are all responsible for all the children. There you go. I beseech you not to assume it couldn't happen to you. It has happened to thousands of children and parents. We always reach out after our women and children have been raped, molested, are missing, or murdered. This center will take a proactive stance. Let me make one thing very clear right off, because I don't want people going home thinking that these fingerprints are going to make their children safe. They're not. And what they are is a method of identification which we really hope nobody will ever have to use. But if parents keep the prints in a safe place, along with a photograph and maybe dental records, at least they'll have something to give to the police when and if. Two whole minutes on the NBC affiliate, two and one of the locals. Some guy came out after the minute they did it at 6 o'clock. You know what he said? The pictures in the cartons are scaring the children. They're giving them nightmares. Oh, boy. Plus some good news. You found your antacid pills. Besides that, 22 states have the legislative package. Has any of it been enacted yet? No, not yet, but we'll get it started. Oh, that's great, honey. How are you and Megan? Oh, we're fine. We're a little lonely, you know. I love you, too. Bye-bye. Did you forget something? Oh, no. We're the family that's raising Adam now. We just wanted to call and tell you the body they found. That wasn't your son, Mrs. Walsh. Adam is alive. Adam is not alive. He was utterly identified beyond a shadow of a doubt. And how in the hell did you get this number? Believe what you want. I'm telling you, he's a happy, healthy eight-year-old doing wonderfully at school. He has a two-wheeler, lots of... Too. What's Dr. Howardson say? She says we're doing all right, me and our new little friend. Just all right? Well, you know, I could use a little more exercise, Mrs. Walsh, and a little more care with the diet, and a little more sleep, too. Great. So I got to get to California. California? <sighs> you see what this judge did down there? Guy had ten counts against him. The judge dismisses nine, gives him probation on the tenth. You believe that? Probation. Well, you're not going to get him to reverse himself by going there. 
No, but I'm going to let those people know who, maybe I should say what they have on the bench. When? Tomorrow. Just three days. I'll be back on Thursday. Just three days here, two days there. Do you realize that you have not spent ten consecutive days with us in this house since we moved to Washington? What about the holidays? December 23rd, Duluth. December 28th, Boston. I'm alone in a city I have no friends in. Me, Megan, and, and the crank phone calls I get. How am I supposed to get to the hospital in the middle of the night with you away? What do you mean, phone calls? You never mentioned any phone calls. What difference does it make? It's not that I don't want you to go. That's what makes it worse. I do want you to go. For Adam's sake, I want you to go, but I want you to hear more all at the same time. You should have told me about the call. And add that to everything else you have on your mind. I wouldn't mention it now, except that it all got to me when you said California. Got to be too much. John, Megan and I cannot be alone now, not with me the way I am. We have to have somebody with us. What about Graham? Graham and Joe. Graham and Joe are coming? Mm-hmm, on Thursday. Because they love you. And they miss you. And we're going to have the celebration. What are we celebrating? Oh, it's Joe's birthday. I forgot Joe's birthday. It's okay. You're going to bake the cake. Bet you won't be here to have any of it. I'll be here. I promise. John, why don't you tell me you were going to California this afternoon? Jay, there's a judge out there who's been giving probation to convicted child molesters. It'd still be helpful to know about these things. If you're worried about Alabama... Alabama, that's right. I'm very worried about Alabama. The first chance we've had to get some meaningful legislation on the books in that state, and I don't want to blow it. I was going to spend this afternoon going over the proposal with you. Uh, look, not only does this give me a chance to blast the judge who's been soft on child molesters, but I'm going to talk to a few people who might be willing to give us a little extra funding around here. You're going to spread yourself too thin, you know that? I never felt better in my life. Wait to nail his so-called honor. How in the hell could he do it, Marvin? And this is the third time, John. Be sure to thank the guys who monitored his court for me. They're the ones who really pinned the tail on the donkey. Oh, what a shot. Is he yeah. Okay. Ah. On behalf of missing and abused children everywhere, I would like to present the Cracked Gavel Award to Judge William Castlefort. For the third time in six months, he's given probation to a previously convicted child molester, setting him free so he can wreak his special brand of havoc on the young people of our community. We hope the electorate of this city will take note. Have you got me? Uh, okay. <laughs> well, what do you think? Oh, it's very oh. nice. Kind of small, huh? Oh, big enough for the grand tour. Megan, take me on a grand tour. Here, Mom, I'll take your coat. Oh, all right, thanks, dear. So what's John been doing for exercise these days? Oh, he uh, runs to and from airplanes. Oh, I can't wait to see him. Well, he'll be here tonight. He promised. The police chief has asked for a big favor. There's a girl here. She's in trouble. Really help if you could talk to her for a little while. Marvin, I don't have time. I, mean, I can't miss this plane. I'm supposed to be in Washington tonight for my brother's birthday. John, just for a few minutes, the girl saw Adam, and when she heard you were in town, well, uh, it was the most positive reaction we've had from her in months. Who's working with her? Psychiatrists, counselors. We've tried dozens since she was raped. She just freezes them all out. She gets sent home from school for throwing tantrums at least once a week. How bad was it? As bad as it gets. After he raped her, he slashed her throat, left her for dead. Marvin, if I do this, I'm never going to make my plane. They never caught the guy, John. He's still out there. He calls her. He wants to know, does she want more?
It's up to you. Hi, I'm John Walsh. What's your name? Didn't I tell you? What'd they say about me anyway? Well, they said you'd seen the show about my son, what happened to him, and that it might be good if we talked. I can't talk about it. I know what happened. No, you don't. I'm not a psychologist or a psychiatrist or a counselor. Just the father of a murdered boy. You're right, I don't know what it was like. Nobody does. But I can tell you one thing for sure. Whatever you had to live through, you gotta stop feeling like a victim. And you gotta put it behind you because all you're doing now is, is hurting yourself. They stare at me all the time. Who? Everybody. The kids in school, the teachers. How would they like it, do you think, if a man pulled you into his car he shoves the knob of the gear shift lever in your mouth. He tells you he's gonna kill you if you don't shut up. And then he takes a knife. What chance did I have, Mr. Walsh? He was a man. I was a little girl. What could I do? Couldn't do anything then. But now, Susan? Tomorrow? Do what? I told you, Mr. Walsh, they think I'm dirt. What do you think? I mean, that's all that counts first off. What do you think? I think I'm dirt, too. Why? Because somebody stronger, bigger, older dragged you away? What did you have to do with that? Why me? There had to be a reason he picked on me. No, Susan. No, no, no. People like that are destroyers. It doesn't matter who or what. It's random. Face in the crowd. One girl's as good as another. One boy. My mother had to borrow $500 for the counselor because of me. Because of him. And you know how you can make up for that? By proving you're one hell of a human being, no matter what anybody thinks. By walking onto that campus with your head up. By doing well. Showing them what kind of grades you can get. I mean, then going on to college. I think you'd make a damn good judge. Or a DA, or, or a senator, or, or, I mean, why not? You've been there, you know. I couldn't. Yes, you can, Susan. Because otherwise, he will have won. Is that what you want? No. Most men don't do what that man did. Sorry, I missed the plane. I'll be home tomorrow. But I kept Megan up. She's been waiting. We've all been waiting. John, it's your own brother's birthday. I know. I know. I'm sorry. So am I. Goodbye. He missed his plane. How could he have missed his plane? Mom, a million things could have happened. Reve's used to it. Well, I'm not. And neither are you. Come on, honey, it's late. Time to go brush your teeth. She's sleepy. Yeah, time for bed. I'll be in there just a minute. See you, Miss Oh, she was so looking forward to a piece of the cake. Well, she can have it tomorrow. Or next week, or next month, or next year. The very first chance that John has to drop by. John, you have to trust the courts. They're active in the area of child abuse, crimes against children. I know you're an attorney and a member of the club, but you couldn't be more wrong. This cracked gavel thing is excessive, that's all. It says to the public that the whole system is wrong, which doesn't help anyone. Uh, John, fundraising is on the docket tonight, huh? Well, suppose we just change the subject. Good idea, because he sure doesn't know what he's talking about when he talks law. You know, I may not have a law degree, but I bet I've sat in on many more trials than you have. I'm sure you have. I don't attend, I defend. Just once, I'd like to cross-examine the defense attorney, put you through it, see how you'd manage. You can cross-examine me. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm game, Marvin, if you don't object. 
Well, uh, yeah, you, you be the judge. Look, if it's all in the spirit of fun... Uh, oh, I didn't say that. No, no, no. I said uh, I'd like to cross-examine a defense attorney the way I've seen them cross-examine rape victims. And I said I'm willing to be cross-examined by you. Great. Right. Uh, okay, uh, would you, uh, would you uh, state your name? <clears throat> Edgar Milton. Ah, uh, Mr. Milton, uh, you told the court that uh, you were raped by my client, is that correct? It is. Okay, uh, before proceeding with the details of that incident, uh, I'd like to establish for the court your life prior to the rape. Uh, are you married, Mr. Milton? I am. Happily? Very much so. Is your wife here in the courtroom today? She is. Would Mrs. Milton please step forward? Ah, thank you, Mrs. Milton. Here in clear view of the court, thank you. Uh, Mr. Milton, uh, prior to the rape, uh, had you had any homosexual experiences? I had not. Oh, I don't mean just as an adult. I mean back to your boyhood, your childhood. I had not. Well, then we may conclude that uh, all of your sexual experiences have been heterosexual. They have. Well, I, I won't pry into the uh, variety and number of those experiences for the sake of your lovely wife. I object. How dare you even suggest it? Uh, Mr. Walsh didn't say he would pry. He said he would not pry. However, if he chose to, he could pry. Objection overruled. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. But I would like to delve into your sexual life uh, with your wife. Uh, when was the last time you made love, the two of you? Last night. May I ask if there's a certain amount of foreplay? You may not. Then we may conclude that there was no foreplay. <gasps> Damn you, Walsh! What kind of a bastard are you? Bastard? Oh, no, 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 no. I believe our judicial system calls it a defense attorney. Well, the game is over. And you just proved my point. You couldn't last five minutes under my grilling, so how can we subject a 10-year-old child to six attorneys for 16 days? Which is exactly what happened here in California. I really know how to be the life of the party, right? John. Sorry. For the hundredth time, I'm sorry. Whose birthday will you miss next time? Megan's? I was with a 14-year-old girl who needed someone to tell her she wasn't a piece of dirt. I couldn't just walk out on her, not even for Joe's birthday. What about the three-year-old girl in there? Or the baby in here? Who's going to see to it that they get to be 14? Who's going to see to it that you get to be 40? I'm tough. I can handle it. Oh, well, that'll go well on the tombstone. I'm tough. I can handle it. Please don't make me feel guilty about doing something good. It's not the something good I'm against. I have been for that from the beginning. I am for that now. And don't tell me that these things mushroom. I know that better than anyone else. I was there when it was just one DA, one insignificant state legislator, one 5,000-watt regional radio station in the middle of nowhere. But it's gotten to be a whole lot more than that, John, now. It's whole legislatures instead of just some PTA, and it's too much. You cannot do it all alone. Well, who says I'm doing it alone? You're here, the Walsh Center is there, the yes, National every Center. Every time they call, they say, hey, John, it's got to be you. It's you they're expecting. And you think it has to be you who I'm calls. Adam's father. And I'm his mother. What I want to know is are we a marriage anymore? Okay. I'm right here, and I'm going to keep a close watch on them. I know what contractions are when it's time to get the car out. Now you go knock them dead in Montgomery. I was thinking how much I want this one to be a boy. I think we're all ready for that. 
When Reve was pregnant with Megan, I said, no, son, please, God, not yet. I couldn't handle it. Not then. Too soon after Adam. But now, Graham, I can't tell you how badly I want a son again. It's all I think about. I've been going through Adam's things. The snorkeling gear, the model ships, the soccer ball, and all the stuff. That Am I doing the right thing? I mean, if it is another boy, it wouldn't be fair to think of him as taking Adam's place. No one could take Adam's place. Hell, that's not what I want. You're afraid of forgetting Adam if you have another son? Now, you know that's impossible. That boy is in your heart, in all of us. So you don't have to worry about shortchanging another son. He'd be one hell of a kid in his own right. Oh, you and Reve have so many wonderful things to look forward to, you'll see. I'm worried about us, Graham, Reve and me. I'm really worried. She hates it here. And she doesn't say it, she wouldn't. But Florida is where you are, in the house, and all her friends, me. The fact is, it's not the city. Or that the apartment's half the size of the house. It's just that we're drawing apart. Yes, I know. I've seen it. Commitments to causes do things to people. But you have a responsibility to obey the children and to yourself. It's up to you, John. I've learned one thing since Adam was murdered. The real battle is on the state level. We live in a country of 50 feudal little kingdoms called states, all with different laws. Georgia might as well be Switzerland. North Carolina might as well be Sweden. Alabama might as well be Austria. It's not going to be a close vote when they get to voting. The problem is getting the bills up for a vote. Someone's holding it up. Someone. A few someones, actually. Boy, it sounds like some personal agendas on the line. Mm. Elections are coming. There's a whole bunch of personal agendas on the line. Baxley is the key. What about him? What should I know about him? Bill Baxley, Mr. Walsh, Lieutenant Governor. It is a pleasure to shake your hand. Oh, the pleasure's all mine, believe me. We really appreciate all the help you can give us here. We understand there may be a problem getting the child protection package even up for a vote at all. There are one or two legislators thinking of mounting a filibuster, yes. Problem not with protection of children, but with teacher raises. Well, I don't understand that at all. And what do teacher salaries have to do with the missing children's issue? Shouldn't that be two different bills? Oh, but they are, Mr. Walsh. The fly in the ointment is that this teacher bill comes to a vote before yours. And that's the proposal these people are trying to shoot down. Oh, so you mean that nobody's against the children's legislation? My goodness me, no, sir. The governor, as well as myself, and 90% of the legislature are in support of you. Most of us are parents. Can't you cut off the filibuster? We have certain traditions in our legislature. It troubles me deeply. Sir, we're never going to know how many missing children there actually are until every single state has a clearinghouse. You know that a lot of states already have them, but Alabama... Oh, excuse me. There weren't supposed to be any calls. Oh, for you. Reve? <laughs> Now push that really hey, hard, Brad. It's coming. It's coming. Super hard as you can. Super hard. Super hard. Give it all you got. Give it all you've got. Give it all you've got. Give it all you've got. Hard. Hard. Okay. Push it. Let it hard. Go back down. Take another breath. All right. Take the big one. Okay. Big breath. All right. Come on. One more push. Come on. You can do it. Hand me the ball, please. That's good. Just push a little bit more. You can do it. Is he coming? That's it. He's coming. The baby's coming. Almost, he says it's almost, almost, almost. Really hard, really hard. Okay, here we go. Push down, push down. Here we go. Push down. 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 Push down.
it's him. Him. It's a boy. It's a boy. It's a boy. We did it. It's a boy. Oh, Callahan. <laughs> oh, he's beautiful. Callahan. Everything's okay. That's your name, Callahan. And I couldn't call you that before because I wasn't sure it would fit. But you'd have the credentials. You sure do. Oh, fantastic. Did you see that? <laughs> Where's our fellow? I don't know where he is. They didn't bring him in for breakfast this morning. Well, those nurses are entirely too enamored of him. I'm gonna go find him. Joan, Rave, there's been a complication. Where is he? He's in intensive care. Oh, my God. We have a specialist coming in to see him. Look, if there's anybody you can tell a problem to, it's us. So just tell us, okay? He has what we call wet lung. Apparently, Callahan inhaled something coming through the birth canal. Or maybe right after he got out. That caused an infection. His fever's a lot higher than I'd like. And he's jaundiced. We're waiting for some test results. When? When will you know? 24 hours. Maybe less. Hopefully, less. We're doing everything we can. I can't lose another son, Adam. It's too much. It's just too damn much. And if it's too much for me, you can imagine what it's like for your mama. So if you're up there and you can hear me, you got to do us a big favor. You got to look out for your little brother. Whatever pull you have, wherever, with anyone, please use it. I'm begging you, Adam. Dr. Lanigan, report to emergency. Dr. Lanigan, report to emergency. Dr. Cottrell, Dr. Janet Cottrell, emergency admitting. John? Dr. Parker. It's 6.30. Parker. Oh, emergency. sorry, I fell asleep. Go check with the doc. Wait. to tell. He's just tough as nails. Tougher. Are you telling me the truth? They're bringing him in in a minute. You'll see. We have Adam to thank for this, you know. Adam. You have no idea how much I wanted a son. I think I have some idea. Are you all right? Never better. You look tired. No, it's just the tension. Don't worry. Here he is, oh, the famous Callahan. There he is. Hello. Oh, no. Well, hello. Save the children. Now the proponent of this so-called career ladder bill.
would lead us to believe that the sole purpose of this legislation is to improve the quality of education here in the great state of Alabama. No, Callahan, this is how you tie a bow. Uh, is this all the aspirin we have? Oh, it's okay. I know, they sell aspirin in Montgomery. I thought you weren't gonna go back. How can I not go back? Everything's coming to a head. Bills are going to the floor for a vote. They're expecting me. Alive or dead? People catch colds, Rebe. This is exhaustion. That's what this is. I have never seen you so tired. What do you want me to do? Call up and renege? Send Jay? Jay wasn't Adam's father. This is our life here. This is not our life. This is your life, and you are destroying it. We have at least 500 kids and parents on the Capitol stairs. PTA is busting them in. They have the faces of 100 missing kids printed on 2,000 balloons. They've organized rallies all across the state today. Thousands of people are going to be involved. Oh, boy, all that sounds great. Just perfect. I mean, they've got to pass this bill. That's, it's just, that's wonderful. Um, but I'm not going to be there. What do you mean you're not going to be there? Why not? I can't explain it. Well, if they don't end the filibuster, you may have to hold a press conference. You can't do that unless you're here. No, they've got to pass it. They've got to pass it. The taxpayers of Alabama simply cannot afford the luxury of this so-called career ladder boondoggle. Price tag's way too high. We all know. John, this is the Myron. The, the filibuster is still going on. Call right. Baxley, please. Okay, I'll call him. That's not the issue here today. There are many things we can do to help improve. Alabama, save the children! Alabama, save the children! Alabama, save our children! Save the children! It's not as if we weren't expecting this filibuster. I did discuss it with you before. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, yes, you did. And, we, and we, we talked about what we should do about it, right? I mean, politics versus tradition. I mean, it's not me you should be worried about, Mr. Baxley. It's those parents and kids outside your capital right now and, and those lawmakers inside who could use a little direction, you know? Mr. Walsh, I have told you, I'm not against this measure. Boy, I'm glad to hear that, because I'd sure like to tell that to a press conference at the National Center here in Washington. Now, there are quite a few senators who have lined up with me on this issue. And we plan to stand here and talk until we are blue in the face, because that's how strongly we feel on this issue. Listen, I want to tell you all something. We've had plenty of time to discuss this issue. But the effect of going on like this will be to kill other legislation before this session ends. You're gonna miss your plane. I know. What I said before. He's absolutely I... right. I should have had the brains to say it to myself months ago. What about Alabama? They need you. Well, they'll do that without me. They'll pass it because it's the right thing to do. It's smart, it's sensible. It's good politics. Is that what you told them? <clears throat> In a nutshell. What'd they say? She said she'll call me when the vote's being taken. Let's call the first bill on the calendar. I'm going to recognize Senator Aldrich for a vote on the child protection bills. Mr. President, we have before us now the package of child protection bills. The first bill is House Bill 936, which establishes a clearinghouse to keep track of all missing children in the state of Alabama. The clerk will call the roll. 
Act number 85-537, House Bill Right now, the Alabama legislature has before it one of the best packages of child protection legislation I've seen anywhere in the country. This package of laws must pass. Betso. Aye. Bennett. We must have videotaping of children's testimony. Aye. We need stronger laws mandating police agencies to communicate with each other. Dixon. Aye. We need stronger penalties for crimes against children. Figures. And mandatory jail sentences for repeat offenders. Smith. We need to do background checks for teachers, daycare workers, foster parents. Law will affect the quality of these children's lives. The time has come to change the law. going home, John. Yeah, just slow down. Uh, here are those articles you asked me for. I thought you might want to take them with you. Boy, I'll tell you, all of a sudden, everyone's an expert on missing children. I got experts coming out of my ears saying that we've been scaring kids with pictures on milk cartons and grocery bags. It was bound to happen, Jay. We should have seen it coming. When the first person said we were scaring people about the number of children being taken by strangers, we should have done something. We've been trying, John. You know that. We've been trying for years to get solid figures from local police on the number of kids abducted by strangers. Meanwhile, we've been getting kids back all over the country because of the pictures. I got it. I got it. Sit down. I'm scared, Jay. I'm scared for me, and I'm scared for the family. I'm broke. They've ordered me into the hospital for a battery of tests. After losing Adam, you can't imagine how hard it is for me to get on a plane every day and leave Callahan and Megan. I'm tired. I need a break. I know. You take as long as you need. Sit there, I'll, uh, I'll finish this up for you, okay? Come on, darling. Woo. You know, we're really worried about you, John. I'm okay. I'm moving along.
Looks like Oda's tool won't be tried after all. I don't think they have enough to charge him with at this point. I didn't know that. You remember the day we taught Adam to play football? <laughs> How could I possibly forget that? <laughs> we took him out to the park. <laughs> his father and his uncle. I hit him high, you hit him low. Gave him a bloody nose and knocked out a loose tooth in the front of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> he was so excited when he got home. He ran to Ravade, screamed with delight. I got a bloody nose and I lost a tooth. <laughs> <sighs> I'll never forget that day. He was some kid. Yeah, you know, that's another some kid. It's gotta be around for him. I will be. I'm cutting myself off for a month. No TV, no interviews, no, no speaking engagements. Just gonna rest and get my strength back. That's good. That's what I want to hear. And now they're using hypnosis, trying to find any new lead in the disappearance of 11-year-old Stacy Jazvac. Three witnesses who saw a red truck speeding away from the vacant lot in Lauderdale Lakes where Stacy's bike was abandoned last Thursday are being hypnotized inside the sheriff's office right now in hopes they might subconsciously recall more details about that truck. The police search continued in the air and on the ground today in a vacant lot where a month and a half ago, another 11-year-old girl was allegedly raped by one of several vagrants who live here. Police found no vagrants and no clues. Stacy was last seen Thursday at 5.30 when she left her Lauderdale Lakes home to go to the drugstore on her bicycle. Police found the bike in this vacant lot that night at 7. Yesterday, two psychics led police to a rock pit in Miramar where they said they felt Stacy's presence. The search produced nothing. Most policemen are of the thinking that uh, they should follow leads and not uh, something like that. This is Jazzvac. Uh, I'm John Walt. This is my wife, Rave. Thanks, Melanie. Could you excuse us for a minute, please? They found her bicycle. She wouldn't just leave her bike, Mr. Walsh. She just wouldn't do that. No, of course not. She's been gone two days. Almost. Almost two days. Well, there's plenty we can do, Mrs. Jazzvac. Is she listed with the National Center with Florida Clearinghouse, the FBI computer? I don't know. All right, let's find out, Rave, right away. Make sure she is. <clears throat> we're going to have to distribute thousands of these. We'll start by getting them out all over Florida. And we're offering a $5,000 reward. The Adam Walsh Center will come up with the money somehow. I've already lined up two local television stations. We're working on a third. But after that, we're going to have to get Stacy's picture on national television because local news just isn't enough. I mean, some of these children have been found thousands of miles from where they were taken. Do you think she's alive? Let the letter live. Well, we're going to have to work on that assumption. 
Mrs. Jasvac, I know I walked in your shoes. You really don't have any choice. Yes. John, it's the news director of WATB. Excuse me. Hi, Bob. How are you? Uh, listen, I need some help, but maybe I, I, I need your advice. Uh, you know, the publicity has to some jazz music. Over. We're going to be on the 6 o'clock news. I've got it right here. We better hurry if we're going to make all three of them tonight. People don't want to deal with this. It's too tough. It makes them feel uncomfortable. You feel better when these kids are put into neat little categories. Runaway, throwaway. Kids, okay? It was just a custody battle. He was only gone eight hours. He wasn't really missing. You don't have to be decapitated like Adam to be missing. Nobody outside of South Florida even knows Stacing's missing. I hate to even think what hell Stacy may be going through right now. What Adam must have... John, John, we can't even think about that. We are angry. We are always going to be angry. We are the parents of a murdered child. all right. I don't know where in the hell he is. Mr. Walsh. Hi. John, just, I'm going to be right over here next to the camera. There will be a 15-second lead-in right after the commercial, and then we'll go right to you. Okay. It's all right? Fine. Okay. It's fine. That's good. Okay. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, in the studio, we have John Walsh, the father of Adam Walsh, the six-year-old Broward County boy who was abducted and murdered in 1981. Mr. Walsh is here to give us an update on the case of Stacy Jazvac, who is still missing. I know what a toll this has on parents. I mean, uh, how it was for Reve, my wife and me, and how it must be for Stacy's parents. But the real victims here, and we mustn't forget it, are the children, and the only hope this little girl has is that we won't forget her and that we will keep on looking for her. I mean, we need everybody's help. Somebody must have seen something. Remember, this is a little 11-year-old girl who's hoping desperately that someone will see her and save her. Now, if you've seen anything or have any information on Stacy Jazvac, please call this number. She's dead. Of course. Of course she's dead. 
just like Adam, and we don't know how many others. John, don't. Don't. Why not? What's the point? Nothing's changed in five years. Things have changed. You know they've changed. Not enough. It's never going to be enough. I can't do this anymore. Yes, you can. We can. We have to. Whether it's one Adam or one Stacy, it's one too many. On February 14, 1986, Stacy Jazvac was found murdered. It's too late for Stacy, and it's too late for our Adam, but it's not too late for the children who are still out there. I'm Reve Walsh. For the next two minutes, you will see pictures of children who are still missing. Please watch carefully. Maybe your eyes can bring them home. Endangered Runaways Karen Campbell William Cordes, Christine Green, Vanessa Pendes. Abductions by unknown individuals. Christopher Abeta, Regina Armstrong, Shelley Ann Baxu, Anthonette Cayadito, Michelle Dorr, Jesus Gonzalez Reynoso, Jessica Gutierrez, Chris Harvey, Jeremiah Huger, Era Johnson, Martha Lambert, Jacqueline Lomax, Catherine Malcolmson, Donnell Minor, Nicole Morin, Christy Proctor, Sarah Pryor, Deborah Reif, Sandy Sunderland, Chad Thompson, Rima Traxler, Parental Kidnappings Michael Aguilar Bo Arsenault Tiffany Brumbelow Joshua Capo Alan Collins Terence Connor Brandon Dawson Gaston Evans Abimbola Fadei Eva Fiedler Christopher Hale Matthew Hendricks, Lynn Wong, David Huffstutler, Cornelia Marshall, Melissa McDougall, Amisha Nelson Stirrup, Isaiah Nesbitt, Casey Nutter, Alexander Olive, Jennifer Sauter, Cheyenne Sawyer, Neil Sheehan, Gretchen Skinner, David Sullivan. If you think you recognize any of these children or think you have information on any missing child, please contact the National Hotline toll-free number. Your call will be kept confidential.